Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, is my co-host today as we talk about your relationships, your boundaries, your mental health, your job, your career, and your money. It's what we do every day on The Ramsey Show. Thank you for joining us. Open phones at 888-825-5225. The call is free, and some say the advice is worth exactly what you pay for it. Andrew's with us in L.A., California, Los Angeles. Hi, Andrew. How are you? I'm doing awesome. How are you doing? Better than I deserve. What's up? So um, my wife and I were going over our tax information, and we were having a slight disagreement, um, but we not necessarily on the details, just on like the general way in which we're looking at things. I'm wanting to max out my SEP IRA. I am a uh, freelancer. I've been maxing out my SEP IRA pretty much since I got it. And she feels like we have more than enough saved in retirement, and she doesn't see why we would keep putting so much money in a lockbox that has a do not open until 60 lock on it. Okay. Well, if it's going, it should be a Roth IRA to start with, um, not a traditional. Well, um, yeah, well, I have, we have two Roth IRAs. She has one and I have one. We max that out. And then I have my step IRA, which is I don't think there is a Roth option for the step IRA. At least yeah, that's what I would yes, sir. believe. Yes, there is. Yeah. So you can you yeah, can do a Roth there is, on there it. There is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now, how much are you putting in the SEP? Yeah, I guess. Um, this year it would be around forty thousand, and then we're also doing the six thousand into the each of the Roths. So right. Fifty two thousand that we be, we would be putting in. What's your household income? Uh, investments for a year. Um. It changes year to year. Um, somewhere in the one hundred and fifty to two hundred thousand range is take home. You're going heavy. Do you, is your home paid for? Yes. So you're one hundred percent debt free. Yes. Okay. Um, how old are you? Thirty-three. What are the balances of the of these accounts currently? Let's see the SEP IRA. Um, I haven't looked at it like recently because they just took a nasty hit, but it's somewhere around 385 and then about a hundred in my Roth IRA and then about 53 in her Roth IRA. And then we have a couple of 401ks that we have yet to convert to IRAs for complicated reasons. And those have about uh, 40 between the two of those. Okay. Well, it, it you're right. It's a, a philosophical argument more than anything else. The only reason that I would agree with her would be if you want to do some investing outside of these because you've got enough going in to create what we would call bridge accounts uh, to bridge between now and 59 and a half if you wanted to access some of the wealth before 59 and a half. Because um, you got 600000 at 33 years old. If you keep that in good growth stock mutual funds, you're going to be in really, really good shape in those accounts without adding anything to it. So, um, uh, but I, I'm always of the opinion if I can keep the government's hands off the money, I'm going to keep their hands off of it. If you have zero other investments, though, um, she probably has a bit of a point. Does she want to yeah. invest the money or spend it? Does she want to buy real she, estate, go buy a, a rental house or something, or does she want to get cooler cars? I probably more the former. I don't think that there is a specific idea of what she wants to do with it. It's just a matter of when we look on like the Ramsey investment calculator, how we're going to have tens of millions of dollars by the time they retire yep. anyway. She's like, "What? Okay, what? Why? Why are we yeah. building this up even more? We're already like." Mm. Well, the reason you're building up more is you're the reason you're building up more is you're building wealth and all the things that you can do with yeah. wealth, which is generosity and change your family tree and all those kinds of things. The only point that I would agree with her on is not not is it you know can you save too much? No, you can't save too much. I mean, unless you don't have a life, you need to have a life in there in in your budget. Uh, but 
uh, you don't have a payment in the world. You've done very, very well at 33 years old living in Los Angeles. I mean, my gosh, well, you're killing it. So um, the only reason she would have a point would be if you wanted to access some of the wealth prior to 59 and a half for something to do something with. Um, in our case, I'll give you an example. We had uh, a thousand years ago, it feels like we had a, had saved up 150000 bucks in a non-retirement uh, uh, mutual fund. And, uh, and I found a little lake house, a very little lake house that, uh, on a really nice lot. And it was the first thing we ever bought that wasn't like our home. To survive, yeah. It was like, it was like, like the first toy thing, luxury sure. thing we bought. We bought a lake house, but I mean, it was like a, it's like a thousand square foot brick, 1974, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't like a palace or anything, but and it was an estate, and we got a deal on it at the time, and it was uh, the year 2000, uh, so it was 22 years ago, yeah. you know, and, and, and I bought it for $103,000, and I took some of that money and did that. Now, that's long before, obviously, I was 59 and a half, so it was good that I had that money, other wealth, to be able to do something like that, and, and that's probably the stage that you're heading towards. Can as somebody who's done as well as he had, I never thought about this till just now, can you play this the retirement game so well that you make it yourself completely you lack liquidity so much you almost trap yourself because if he has a couple of down years he may have a million dollars in these retirement accounts but no other yeah no yeah, other I mean, money you're right? not you're not trapped but that's the point i mean you're gonna she's on to something yeah. is what you're saying and i'm saying i'm just yeah. wondering yeah yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's uh that you could go ahead and start doing some other just um Mutual fund investing, something like a low turnover mutual fund, maybe just an S and P five hundred, which is what I pulled that lake house money out of. And you build that money up, and then you say, okay, we're going to do something else with that investment wise, or we're going to do something else with that consumption or generosity wise. Does that does that S and P mutual fund earned less return than these retirement accounts? No, but it's taxable. Okay. And the Roth IRA is whatever correct. mutual fund is not taxable. Right. Okay. So that's the difference. Okay. And it is, if you leave it alone a year, it's taxable uh, at a capital gains rate, mm -hmm. a lower rate. But, you know, it's a way to park some money that you can get to without any penalties and uh, with limited taxation. Gotcha. Uh, until you, until, as, as a bridge to get between now and 59 and a half to be able to access some of it. So, yeah, you're probably needing to do some of that at this stage. You've, you've done so well. Congratulations. That was a beautiful, beautiful thing you pulled off. Very, very fun. Man, that is fun, man. Yeah. That, it's And what a great discussion. <laughs> I know. I mean, we're on baby step seven. House is paid for. We live in L.A. We make $150,000 really a year. My wife and I are sitting and looking at stuff. And the only argument we've got is how we do investing. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> These are not things that people deal with very often oh, unless they've been so very, cool. very intentional. And uh, really, really good stuff. Congratulations. Well done. Well done. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, my co-host today. This is The Ramsey Show. Chaos. That's what it can feel like when your business is growing so fast you've outgrown your financial and accounting software. The faster you grow, the more likely you are to lose control of the numbers. And here's the reality. If you don't know your numbers, you don't know your business. That's why we use NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. Over 28,000 companies use NetSuite by Oracle, including Ramsey Solutions, because NetSuite gives us a single view of everything we need to make daily decisions. Whether you're making a few million to hundreds of millions a year, NetSuite gives you the visibility and control of the things you need to grow, like your financials, inventory, HR, planning, budgeting, and more, all in one dashboard. Go to netsuite.com slash Ramsey right now to get their free white paper, Jumpstart Your CFO Career.
half of Americans over 65 will need long-term care. Average cost is now $138,000. you got to plan for your long-term care needs, especially by the time you're 60 years old. I don't recommend long-term care insurance until you're 60, but after that, I do. Medicare will not pay for everything, and Medicaid nursing home is welfare. So you don't qualify for government nursing home unless you're on welfare. So we recommend long-term care insurance for people age 60 and over. It helps pay for nursing home care, assisted living, even in-home care. And that way you get to keep your independence and your savings. Long-term care insurance protects your family, too, because your spouse, your kids won't have to bear the financial and emotional burden of caring for you. Guys, here's how it works. 75% of you ladies will outlive your husbands. And the typical scenario, the negative scenario, is 300K in the retirement account, and Papa goes into the nursing home, cracks and scrambles the nest egg, uses it for the nursing home, dies, leaves Mama home, broke, used up the nest egg. Get long-term care insurance. Our network of endorsed local providers will help you understand your long-term care insurance options and find the right policy for you. Visit RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care. And we'll help you get started. RamseySolutions.com slash long-term care. And we'll hook you up with an ELP. We'll get this going. Clayton's with us. Clayton is in Portland, Oregon. Hi, Clayton. How can Dr. John and I help? Hi, you guys. It's nice to speak with you. You too. Um, I saw you in your in the SMART conference at Sacramento. My wife and I went down before the pandemic. And so it was really fun to be able to see that and be well, a part of that. Well, thank you. We're doing another one finally in Dallas in the fall, October 22nd. Maybe you can come down for it. Yeah, we'd love to. So I do have a question. Um, I have grown siblings. My wife and I are doing pretty well. We're on baby step six. And uh, our annual combined salary is around 200000 Um We have close to 600000 in our 401 We both have pensions. You know, we're doing really well. So uh-huh. we only owe 155 on our house, and it's worth over 400 Wow. <clears throat> so the question that I have is with my siblings. Um, my sister and I were adopted when we were little. Um, my mom proceeded to have two more siblings after we were adopted out. And we recently got in contact with them about four years ago. So we're all in our 50s uh, now. And um, the trauma from being in an alcoholic home has really caused a lot of damage over the years. Um, the three other siblings don't really have a whole lot going on financially or otherwise, but the problem for my wife and I is because we're doing so well, we feel bad, uh, when we can't help them or we don't help them, you know, with finances or anything like that. And we feel like we're doing wrong when we do, because we feel like we're enabling the situation. So I guess we just need some guidance on how to deal with that situation. (laughs) Hmm. That's hard, man. I'm so sorry. Well, um, that's the beginning of our story. I mean, we haven't finished yet. Our story's still going. So, yeah. I mean, I, she was pretty rough. I mean, she. Do they do they call you? Do they? I mean, do they call you and hit you up for money? How, how does that interaction work? Um, it's small stuff. It's usually I can't meet the I can't meet the expenses. Like um, one of my brothers couldn't pay for his rent. And then another one, when we went to see our brother, he uh, didn't have enough money to get back home. And then my sister, I've been helping her for years with money because she's just, now she's disabled and she gets a disability check, but she just doesn't have, she isn't able to make ends meet, you know? So it's a really tough situation for us. You know, I get up at 4 a.m. and go to work every day. I have, I'm 30 years at the same job. And so, we earn that money and we feel like we're doing the right thing, but we just need to know where to put or what to do with all that. So we're kind of at a loss as far as it, is it okay to help them or are we enabling that behavior? Do we, you know, I don't, I don't know them well enough to just speak on their lives. Yeah. Except this, when somebody invites themselves into your life to ask you for your resources, that is permission as far as I'm concerned to then speak on the utilization of that money, right? How is this money helping or hurting somebody? Yeah, if, if, if you have the guts to ask me for money, I have the guts to tell you how to use it. Because it's mine, right? 
And the idea well, that you're a bank account or a, ch- a blank check for other people is that, – That's complete dysfunction. That's right. That's right. That's just guilt. Well, sometimes. there's no doubt that dysfunction is there. We're all Native American, and in the Native American community, it's it's a different – it's kind of a different dynamic because we really give. I mean, we try to – Absolutely. My heart is a giving heart, you yeah, know, and, I, and I feel bad, you know, when I don't – So here's the thing. I don't have them. Here's yeah. the thing. You use the word help, and when you're giving, you should – help so you need to define help differently help is not giving a drunk a drink that's enabling that's not help help is not participating in funding someone's delusions or craziness or misbehavior that's not help so if when you give them money if as a result of you giving them money they're not better then you didn't help You made yourself feel better for a few days. And you made them feel better for a few days, and now they go back to the exact same behavior? That's not a Native American thing. That's an enabling thing in any culture. So you're not helping when you give a drunk a drink. And that's the classic line about enabling. You're not helping. Enabling, when I'm, when I'm an enabler, and I'm not very often, but I have been at times, uh, I get caught in some kind of crossfire, some kind of triangulation or something, and I feel like I'm caught and I've got to do this, and I feel trapped, and it's, it's, it's all a false premise, but I get myself in there just like everybody else does. And, and I feel like I'm helping, but they're not better when I'm done then I, that they didn't move along to a better life, you know, then I didn't really help. It's kind of like telling people what they want to hear just so they'll feel okay. And yet it didn't really help them. Instead, we have to tell them the truth on this show. And sometimes it, you're, you're so harsh. You know, I, I just love you enough to tell you the truth because I want you to be better after our conversation. I want you to be better after I give you this check. And so if I'm giving money to your brother for rent and, or to my brother for rent, if I'm you, it's going to sound like, okay, here's what this comes with. Okay, we're all trying to survive this train wreck of a family and we're all trying to get better. And I'm willing to help you with your rent if you get better and that means you're going to get on a budget and you're going to send me a copy of the budget before I send you the money and you're going to promise me that you're going to read this total money makeover book or you're going to go to this financial peace university class I'll pay for it but you've got to go you've got to get better I'm going to use the money as leverage in their life to lift them not to good advice not to participate in their stuff and let's be honest the the response is going to be who do you think you are oh mr fancy and you're going to say i'm your brother and i love you exactly you don't owe an explanation for who i who i think i am is i think i'm the guy with the money over here that cares about you and i love you that's right i care about you and so i'm going to dangle this money right in front of your freaking nose to help you can i tell you this to be prepared for clayton one or two of them of your siblings won't take it and you will be the bad guy for trying to make long-term help yep. okay prepare your heart for that and that doesn't mean yeah. that you failed that means that they're still struggling right yeah um yeah that's understood yeah when you won't participate in their deal then they go there and so you know the, the thing is this um the version of you that they create in their head is not your responsibility if they want to camp make you into the villain and they say you, you can't control somebody making you into a villain when you're doing the right thing. That's going to happen. Sometimes you do the right thing and people call you villain. That's right. And they, they write a narrative in their own brain that you're a villain. And they don't get a vote. And, you know, you just don't understand. You're not like a real part of our family, mm-hmm. you know, and you you, uh, you done got uppity, hadn't you? <laughs> you know, and all this stuff. And yeah, uh, yeah, whatever. That's exactly what happened, I guess. But what really happened is I love you so much, I ain't participating in crazy no more, bud. That's what we're doing here. Give you some true help. Yeah. And that's not tough love. That's real love.
Still on baby step number one, eh? How'd you guess? With healthcare costs rising, learn how Christian Healthcare Ministries can help you make the most out of your budget. Visit chministries.org slash budget. Don't worry, it's worth it. Ramsey personality, best-selling author, the brand new book called Presale, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, a not-so-complicated approach to relationships, mental health, and wellness. This book is absolutely stunning and amazing. If you have not bought your pre-order copy yet, the actual shipping will happen in early April when we uh, actually the book actually launches but we're on pre-sale right now if you haven't bought your copy you should you get a month of counseling with the folks at BetterHelp and you get the audiobook and the ebook and um, you know the the total package is worth hundreds of dollars so you really need to check this out all for a $20 book you don't want to miss that at all so own your past change your future at RamseySolutions.com in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt free stage Jason and Ashley are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Hey, Dave. Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Uh, Goose Creek, South Carolina, right outside Charleston. Oh, yeah, beautiful yeah. area. Mm-hmm. Well, welcome. It's good to have you guys. Good to see you. And uh, how much debt have you paid off? Almost $77,000 of soul-crushing debt. Oh, <laughs> right. It's a particular type of yeah. debt, John, soul-crushing. <laughs> yeah, and so <laughs> how long did this take? Um, about 26 months. We uh, started in September 2019, ended uh, November 2019. 2021. Wow. Oh, sorry. Uh, Thank very you. Good. <laughs> very good. Very good. And your range of income during that two years? Um, it went from $46,000 to $103,000. Wow. What do you all do for a living? Um, she is a payroll specialist for a local municipality, mm-hmm. and I am a vehicle appraiser for a very progressive uh, insurance company. Ah. <laughs> See what he did there. See what he did there. <laughs> that was, that was very, very good commercial. I was an honor student. I got that one. He yeah. slipped that right through there. So how did you double your income? Um, well, whenever we first started out, um, it, well, I could go back a little bit. I first started listening to you in uh, 2010, and um, we really didn't do anything about it. I'd just run home and tell her I heard this crazy guy on the radio, and he was talking about all this, and I'd get excited, but I never really led my family and said, let's let's do this. You know, Fast forward a few years, I get into a really bad accident at work, um, led me to have to leave my job and spent three years without a job where this beautiful lady supported me while I took care of the kids at home. And I started to kind of get to that feeling where I thought maybe they wouldn't be, or they might be better off without me. Mm -hmm. Um, But I battled through that, got a bunch of uh, insurance certifications, um, battled my way into my job. And uh, um, then my wife told me that she was wanting to leave her job. And it, it, really worried me. I wasn't that supportive of a husband. (laughs) I I spent 14 years in uh, retail pharmacy and... Oh, yes. That will take your soul like that debt will, won't it? Oh, it it did. It was soul crushing. (laughs) So I just got to a point where I was in a place where I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I just looked at him and said, I'm leaving. Yeah. I'm done. (laughs) So um, I will come up with a plan, but right now I'm done. Yeah. (laughs) So that's who was who was making the 46 when you started this? He was. He was. Okay. so you were out, but then you got a new job. Yeah. And that's how it doubled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Got it. Okay. The amazing thing was whenever we got into the class, she actually came to me and said they're offering FPU at church. you know, if you'd want to go. And I actually resisted, even though I've been listening to you for a while, because I thought that's $100 that we desperately need right now. We went into the class. Let's and, go out to eat and spend yeah. 100 and talk about it. <laughs> that's yeah. right. Exactly. Yeah. But, um, but we got into the class, and we just we just devoted ourselves. We, we submitted to the plan. And the, the, the blessings just is like God opened up the heavens and just said, I see what you're doing. You're trying. Here you go. Because yeah. within three weeks, she got a uh, her current job. 
the, well, I was at least interviewed for the current job. It was within a couple of months yeah. that, we, that I was actually full on what, in the what job. What church? Um, it's uh, St. James uh, United Methodist Church. Great. Okay. Yeah. Very and cool. So she got her new job, and I actually got uh, a new position in my company uh-huh. that raised my salary. And, of course, she was working again. So all that totaled. Mm-hmm. Right about the time you start Financial Peace University. Exactly. Church. That's why okay. I say it just So that's like what blessing. kicked this off 26 months ago was the class, really. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the job comes in and puts fire on the, uh, gas on the mm-hmm. fire. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. 100%. Yeah. Very good. Cool. So what kind of debt was the 77000 Well, we had cell phones. We had credit credit cards. We had a car loan. Um, and, but most of this was uh, Sally Mae. Mm. Yep. Had to give the old woman her eviction notice. You better believe it. Kicked her butt out. There you <laughs> go. I love it. How long have you been out of college? Uh, uh, 2005 for me, 2003 for him. Yeah. Okay. So uh, 15 years yeah. mm-hmm. she'd been hanging around. Time for her to go. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Good. So Good. tell me about the, the little wins. And whenever someone's struggling with just being down in a hole like you were it's these little tiny steps and oh, somebody yeah. believing in you mm-hmm. tell me about that well uh the little wins were probably the easier way to do it just to start and we'd be like all right we paid that off we never thought we'd pay that off okay we got that paid off <laughs> and then we'd work up to it it really felt like as we worked up to it like the last one was he had larger student debts than i did because i made him go to my private Methodist College that my family had all gone to. So, true love, right? Yeah, it yes. is. I, true I, love. It's not often you follow a girl to college and it actually works out. That's right. <laughs> I, I sent him on ahead. Yeah, That's right. we're That's high school sweethearts. But yeah, so. I feel like um, every little win that you get, you got to celebrate. You don't have to go extravagant or anything. You just gotta, you gotta find that little bit of of success. And once you find that success, you just keep building on it and building on it. And it's not only the debt actually rolling off of you, it's the confidence that you get from it. Well, and that's that what I was asking about, and I didn't do a good job asking the question. <laughs> what do you say to a dad sitting there right now who over the last two years has been laid off, and he's starting to look around and think, I think everybody around here would be a little bit better mm-hmm. if I just wasn't here. What would you tell well, that guy? I, I wrote something down here that I realized, and some of it comes from listening to you guys. Um, I realized that I'm not a failure, mm-hmm. I'm not a victim, and I'm not a villain. I was like, all you have to do, you have a chance to be a hero, and all you have to do is just start. Wow. And that's what I did. I had to convict myself that I can do something with my life. I have to find what that something is, and I just have to start today doing it. And like I said, I had a lot of challenges after that. It didn't happen the next day. It happened, you know, months and months later. But it was all that conviction of, you know, the, they're not better off without me. Right. You yeah, know, that, the, that's a phrase right there. I'm not a failure. I'm not a victim. Yeah. And I'm not a villain. And I just got to start. And, I, and so I'm going to start. I'm going to start. That's yeah. right. I love it. And man, Ash, Ashley, powerful. what was it like well, walking well alongside said. him? <laughs> Say again. I, I just, well, okay. when he started out, when it was just bad, I just kept reminding him, no, we can't do this without you. We got two kids. We have little ones. I think we had the... Youngest one, we was still laid off, so he was. I was like, "No, they need you. They mm. need your dad. You're, you're a good dad, and he is a good dad. He's a fantastic dad. It's awesome." And I just kept reminding him that we'd get there. We'd get there. We'd get there. That there's, you know, I couldn't do this without him. Y'all two are amazing. So. Y'all are amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, Definitely, that's powerful. That's how it's done. That's exactly the number how of it's people done. in this country who are exactly where you two are mm. is or in were. the millions were. and. Y'all are a gift. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's you. Uh, that's Thank a powerful you. story. <laughs> yeah, um, man. Yeah. So I am not a failure. So that means I'm a success. I'm not a victim. So that means I'm a victor. And I'm not a villain. So that means I'm a hero. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can be all those things. I just got to start. Uh, yeah. It's on the way, man. It's on the way. As soon as you start, you are. That's, uh, that's <laughs> the thing, man. That's how it works. Oh, man. Love it. Powerful stuff. Well done, y'all. We're proud Thank of you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Incredible. work. Good work. And you brought the kiddos in. I what did. are their names and ages? This is Charlie. He is four. And this is William. He just turned eight the other day. All right. Very cool. Good looking men. <laughs> all right. We got a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. You Thank will you. be Baby Steps Millionaires. Millionaires on your uh, hero journey here. You're, you're amazing. Well done. We're so proud of you guys. And we got a copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away and help somebody. Count it down. Really? Let's hear a debt-free scream. All right. 
Come here, right. boys. Getting this. Three, two, one. We're, We're dead free! John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. His new book is on pre-sale, Own Your Past, Change Your Future, a not-so-complicated approach to relationships, mental health, and wellness. Be sure and get it at RamseySolutions.com. Chad is with us. Chad is in Indianapolis. Hi, Chad. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. This is Chad. How are you? Better than I deserve, sir. How can I help? Hi, Dave. I have a question about my mortgage. Um, my wife and I have enough money to pay it off. Um, we are on baby step four, five, and six, currently investing 15% of our income towards investments. Um, I just have a question. Um, we have about over $100,000 in savings, and our payoff for our house is a little over $85,000. My goal is to pay it off here shortly, but I just wanted some advice. I just get nervous. You know, that $15,000 amount that would be left over is a going to be about a three months to six months emergency fund because we would have no mortgage and we have no debt. Um, I just wanted to get some advice as to what you think, if we should pay it off or we should. Um, and a little bit more background is we're expecting some bonuses coming in March that are pretty significant and in April as well from our job. How much um, is, how much is well significant? Our, What's that mean? How much money? Um, so uh, $40,000 between the two of us in March, about $17,000 in April. Wow. Wonderful. And I just, I mean, I just get nervous. I mean, with the times and things like that, because any job can be up for grabs. And if something would happen with a downturn, I mean, I feel like my job's safe, but who knows with the market and, you know, things are trending with supply chain and things like that. I just wanted to know. Could you how advise how you long have you been off? at your job? I've been at mine for two years. My wife has been at hers for five. Do you have any indication at all that there's any kind of problem at either one? Not with mine, no. Um, but with her, she's in um, in her job. She's in sales for tools with Stanley Black & Decker. And there was a layoff last month, and um, we wanted just to be safe with her job. Uh, my job's secure, but I'm not sure with hers. Um, just because there was a layoff of a thousand employees last month. If I woke up in your shoes, I'd write a check today and pay off my house. I would have done it yesterday. By close of business today. Okay. Okay. I can't think of um, anything that makes me feel safer than having no mortgage payment. Okay. Okay. That yeah. was just something like you I, are. I, I mean, a, you you have gotten where you, you you've done a very good job of getting where you are, and you've gotten there by using some powerful analytic tools that you have in your brain. You've got a strong brain, and you've gotten there by being cautious and conservative. And the thing that got you here is the thing is keeping you from doing it. You're over analyzing this. Pay it off. Okay. And then in in Perfect. thirty days. You'll have forty thousand dollars more. Yeah, this number will be fifty five thousand dollars. Yeah, you're you're just fine. You're just fine. You're gonna get your bonus and then she's gonna keep her job. It's just you're fine. Yeah. Turn the news off. Yeah. Hang out with your friends. <laughs> For God's sake, turn the news off. Yeah, start hey, that's the I other was, thing. I was in the office a while ago, we were getting ready to start a meeting yeah. and they uh, I've got the T V in there that they put you know, you can uh, Apple T V where they put the computer up, you know, and all this stuff. So the people coming in the team that was we're talking about something they're going to put it up on the screen so they turned the tv on to um uh to get ready to put the computer presentation on it right and the news pops up 
my brain just started melting. <laughs> right there. It just, I, I, I lost brain cells. I, before we could get it turned off, I was dumber. I heard you yelling down the street, <laughs> I'm down the hallway, turn it on Young and the Restless, Young and the Restless. <laughs> Bachelor! <laughs> Bachelor! I, I didn't realize what you were yeah, yelling yeah. about. Yeah, now was, I get it. You know those two things didn't happen. <laughs> you are a liar, John Deloney. You are a liar. Oh, Sandy is in College Station, Texas. Hey, Sandy, how are you? Hey, Dave. Thanks so much for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I got up? a question for you. Um, my husband and I are both 62. Uh, he's looking to retire sooner rather than later. Uh, we're on Baby Step 7. We have a net worth of about $2.4 million, of which $1.5 million is in retirement accounts. Uh, we have a paid-for home that's worth about 650000 We have a very small lake cabin, about 100000 a rental home, paid for rental home that's uh, about worth about seventy five thousand. Just and rich people her- problems. I'm telling you, <laughs> yeah. I no, can't wait to hear your problem here. What's the problem? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay. His, his salary right now is about two hundred seventy five thousand a year. But as I said, he's he's pretty much ready to retire. Um, we have when we when we paid for our home, we had our contractor build an unfinished uh, two bedroom apartment above my husband's uh, uh, toy area, <laughs> his, his three car garage workshop. Okay, um, and we're ready to finish that out, and we are trying to decide if we can go ahead and just take the money out of this retirement account since we're over 62 or at 62 and just do it and pay the tax implication yes. or if we're missing something. Okay. No, just do it. Okay. It's a okay. small percentage of your overall world. Okay. Okay. I'm just a little nervous because of, um, you know, we're going to take it. We it's don't not, have it's not enough money to be nervous about. Okay. As a percentage okay. of 2.4 million. What's the right. rental going to okay. cost? Uh, probably between eighty and a hundred thousand. Yeah, if you if you took a hundred thousand dollars out and burned it in the fireplace, your life isn't going to change. Not substantially, no. Uh, other, but, other than the fact yeah. you just wake up in the middle of the night screaming that you were that stupid, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean the point. The, my point is, is that you're actually creating an investment here. You're just you're transferring the investment from one type of investment to another because you're increasing the value of the property by more than a hundred thousand dollars worth of investment. Can I ask you a hard question, sure. Sandy? Sure, John. Go I've I've known some folks who make the kind of salary your husband makes. And mm-hmm. there's, it's easy to tie safety and identity to that amount of money. How much of your mm-hmm. concern is about pulling the money out? And how much of its concern is we're about to not be that couple that makes that kind of money every month? Well, you, you have a valid point. <laughs> we, yeah, it was, it was a long road for us to get to that point. And, of course it was, you know, yeah. both, both of us, um, my husband, fortunately, is a retired, also retired military it has a very good um, pension uh, for his 27 years in, um, but he's he he's of the mind. Oh, I don't want to touch any of this right. ever, and let's just let it grow for the kids. And I'm well. A this bit is growing. Th- this of- is growing for the kids. That's true. Because what you're doing is you're liquidating mutual fund investments and you're putting it in real estate. Okay. And, and when the kids come, they can have their own bathroom, and that's going to make everybody love each other a little bit more, right? Amen. <laughs> That's correct. <laughs> See? <laughs> All right. Mic drop. Well, okay. This is an investment in your family. That's right. But the the value of your property is going to go up equivalent to what you're spending on it. Because this this apartment will have will add to the appraisal. It's a six hundred thousand dollar house. And so yeah, you're just yeah. you're just changing the you know, you're you're just changing the asset. Yeah. You're, you're not you're not consuming it. Yeah. You're not taking a hundred thousand dollars out and blowing it on something that you can't you're actually going to increase the value of your your net worth's not going to change. Right. That's my point. If you consumed it, your net worth would go down by that much. So you're you're in really 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 good shape. Yeah, that's well fantastic. done. That's that's po- that's powerful. But Dave, I do I do talk. I, that's a good. That's I, a really good insight. I missed that. I, I was speaking right to it. somebody this weekend who's thinking about making a major life change, their family, and they have more money than they know what to do with. But the the salary at the new job is substantially less, and it was just a mindset. I'm gonna. I used to be a guy that made this much, and I'm gonna be a guy that makes this much, and it didn't affect the their lifestyle, their net worth. 
but it's just it was an identity and he i think he was struggling with i didn't realize i'd attached it to that yeah and you know what it'll sneak up on you oh yeah yeah, the, yeah. E- even if you're someone who's you know like in my case i i teach people not to have your identity in your stuff don't yeah. have your identity in your in your career don't have your identity but you know i i um I struggle with it. You know, I, I think if I, if there was ever a day I stepped away from this microphone, which yeah. I'm not planning to, I, I think it'd be very hard for me from an identity standpoint. That's right. So yeah. even though I don't, I like to think it's not who I think I am, but I, I think when I did it, it would probably be, Ugh. Yep. you know, uh, for sure. There you go. This is The Ramsey Show. a friend or family member that needs a daily dose of Ramsey advice in their life, let them know about the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast. It's a quick hit of advice about life and money in under 10 minutes. Check out the Ramsey Call of the Day podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. This is the Ramsey Show. You can be intentional about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where dad is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host, Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225 as we talk about your mental health, your relationships, your job, your career, and your money, your life, all right here on The Ramsey Show. Phone number again, 888-825-5225. Russ is with us. Russ is in South Bend, Indiana. Hi, Russ. Welcome to The Ramsey Show. Hello, Dave. Appreciate hey. what you're doing. God bless you, sir. You too, sir. Uh, What's up? And uh, Well, I'm in my FPU. I'm, uh, last night we did steps four through seven. Uh, my situation is this. Uh, recently came into some money through the sale of my house. Uh, recently got married about nine days ago, and uh, a couple of years ago, I was not in this uh, good a financial position, and I took out a debt uh, reduction or debt negotiation contract with this organization. Oh, no. Now, I'm I'm paying off everything. In fact, um, we wrote a check today to pay off my wife's uh, house. Wow. So that's out of the way. We have the, uh, the emergency fund. Does she have a place. separate house than you? No, no. I sold my house. Oh, and now I'm moving, I'm okay. Now I'm moving in with her. And gotcha. Y'all just, y'all just okay. got married. Yeah, okay. There yeah, nine days ago. Okay. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. So my question is this. How do I handle this debt reduction thing that's hanging over my head? I'd like to get out of it completely, but I'm in this contract that involves monthly payments. I uh, called them today and asked them, is it better for me to just go to the creditors myself directly and write them checks? Or do I hang in with you? They indicated, you know, should hang in with them. Well, yeah, of and, course, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I know. It's like well, asking I'm a dog if it's you. hungry. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, the let's see. Is, should we continue to collect fees from you or not? Let me think about this. <laughs> yeah. No, you need to. And you don't have to cancel the contract. You just stop giving them money. It'll all end. Just stop giving them money? Yeah. Yeah. Stop Stop giving that company money that that's doing this um debt repayment plan how many creditors are involved well now it's down to three originally it started out with about a dozen okay well just call those three and negotiate a deal with each one of them were you behind with them in this process probably yeah and uh, of course since i got in this uh this debt reduction thing a couple of years ago there's been no phone calls no harassment yeah. nothing it's just like call them up uh, just call them up and ask for uh and say, okay, I'm in, a, I, I, I'm in a position to pay this off if you give me a deal. Now, what, what kind of deal can we make? Okay. Now, one of the things that was told me today when I called this debt reduction company is, well, you're taking a big risk if you do that. They might get aggressive with you. We've got you covered by this uh, litigation firm that will stand up for you if they do get that kind of aggressive. So it kind of scared me. Um, 
But you're saying uh, just don't pay them and <laughs> talk to the creditors. No worry, I guess. Yeah. Huh? You, you have the money to pay them. I do. Why, why would you worry about them being aggressive? Well, it's been a long time since they've received a payment from me. I don't know. It's if okay. Some... You're, you're the customer on the account. They love money. They, and if you call them up and go, how much can I pay you? <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think they're. I don't think you have to worry about them being aggressive. You also have this awesome feature on your phone called uh, "Do Not Answer." You can hit that too. Yeah, they're they're not going to get aggressive. That's that's this company. God, man, these guys are evil. <laughs> not, man, on, not only not only not only they, they use a scare tactic hey, to keep you on the hook. Russ, what? you're talking about these guys like they're your friends. Yeah, and like they don't have a conf- like they don't have a conflict of interest in this stupid butt advice they're giving you. <laughs> They well, want yeah, to keep you on the line. They want to keep you keep you paying them fees. And you're saying just stop paying them? How do you, how do you get away with that? You stop paying the company that you're talking to on the phone that's giving you this bad advice. Instead, you call the creditors and you ask each of the three creditors a simple question. I'm going to write a check and pay this off today if you will make me a deal. Get what's the deal. And send that to me in an email in written form. You keep that in writing, and you send them that money. Okay. It's, and it goes away. Just, There's not, just that simple. It's only, they're, they're only going to get aggressive, the, the creditors, the three creditors, if they don't get money. Do you have enough to pay all three of them off? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations. You're going to be a free man today. Uh, it'll take you well, It'll take you two weeks to get through the crap here, but, but um, you're going to have to have a, you know, back and forth conversation with them and force them to give it to you in writing. Do not give them money till you get it in writing and do not give them electronic access to your checking account. But you, this company is not your friend. They're debt con solidation companies. That's what we call them. And do I negotiate with these creditors or just give them what they're asking for? I, I would add, I, I would say, uh, what is the balance and what kind of deal can you make me? Okay. Because right. these are all bad debts that yes, you've been paying are. payments on bad debts. They would love mm-hmm. to get your butt off their books. Okay. And they probably right. will give you a, a, an offer of 50 to 70 cents on the dollar in one phone call. Well, that sounds pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> of whatever the balance is. Do you have any idea what the actual balance is today? Yes. Okay. So you can you can um, kind of you've got some basis point to know if the company this creditor when you call them is lying to you then so you can go okay wait a minute yeah. the number I've got is this what are you showing as the balance and if I wrote a check today and paid this off what kind of deal would you give me because I'm thinking about doing that okay if now, you give me a good enough deal they've probably turned this over to collection companies and that's probably who I'll be talking to. It doesn't matter. That. They're the same thing. They want money. Okay. Everyone here wants your money. If, if they, if they yeah, sold yeah. the debt, they sold it for a nickel on the dollar. Uh-huh. And so they sold a thousand dollar debt for 50 bucks. Uh-huh. And if that's who you're talking to that bought your thousand dollar debt for 50 bucks, you're going to get a really good deal when you do what I did when you do what I just told you to do. So dude, you, you are, uh, you act like that. These guys, uh, have magic powers over this other company. They don't have magic powers. They're just doofuses. Or if uh, it sounds like you feel like you fell into a river and these guys showed up on a, on night on like horses with, I don't know, swords and things and pulled you out of the river and saved you. And they didn't, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't. You were in the river and they threw you a concrete block. So here, hold this. Okay. That's. And oh, by the way, there's a fee for the block. There's a fee for the block. <laughs> yeah. So no, th- these are not your friends. This is the slimy. I've never heard industry. somebody with that level of like his heartbeats for this company. No, he's just, he's worried. They, they, they'll scare you, huh? They took care of him when he was scared. Yeah. He, they got the creditors they off got, of him. That's right. And yeah, they got right. a plan, and he's just been working that plan. He didn't want to upset that apple cart. Yeah. And then they pushed on that button because they knew that was the button to use. Man. And that that's keeping him in the saddle here, which is a bad plan. Yeah. Call the three creditors. Get you a deal. Write them a check. Get it in writing. No electronic access to your checking account. Get it in writing. No electronic access to your checking account. And you got a deal. And you'll be out of this in, within two weeks. This is The Ramsey Show.
If you're looking for ways to update your home without blowing the budget, I've got it. For years, I've been telling you about our friends at Blinds.com. Blinds.com makes it simple to shop top quality blinds, shades, and interior shutters from home with easy online ordering and free shipping. With Blinds.com, there's no need to renovate your entire home. Just change out what's on your windows with upscale choices like faux wood blinds, cellular, and roller shades or even outdoor shades. Plus, Blinds.com guarantees the perfect fit. Whether you do it yourself or you have them measure and install everything for you. Shop their latest looks and see how much you can save at Blinds.com today. The easy and affordable way to make your home more beautiful is Blinds.com. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in. We'll talk about your life and your money. Stephen is with us in Indianapolis. Hi, Stephen. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hey, Dave. How are you? Great, man. What's up? Hey, one, just want to say big fan. You guys got me and my wife out of debt over the last couple of years, so I'm uh, following your method. So I just want to say I'm a huge fan of yours, and uh, thanks for taking my call. Well done. Um, yes, sir. On this one, though, I'm calling for my sister. She is historically bad with money, and she needs a little help. Um, she had a car, had it paid off in cash at one point, and needed like $3,000 worth of work. So she did something I don't agree with. She traded in got a loan at a buy here, pay here for a car that's not even worth its own weight now. And now this car needs about $2,500 worth of work. The car is only worth about $3,000 and she owes $10,000 on this loan. So my question is, how can she get out of this car into something more reliable without taking out another loan and rolling negative equity and going into debt? She's screwed. I know. Yeah. I mean, there, there's not a move here. Uh, she's going to be in debt. She's $10,000 in debt, and she has an asset that's now worth 2000 bucks, right? Did I understand that right? right? Yes. Yeah. And so she has an $8,000 hole, and there's the only way to cover that is $8,000, and that's going to come from somewhere. So, um, yeah, obviously we're not going to do a deal with these people again. So, uh, But let me tell you what they will do. It's a buy here, pay here. Their uh, repo rate back onto that lot is very, very high because of this situation. Because people get that people, instead of asking a question like you're asking, they get in these situations and they just drive up and toss the keys in the window and keep walking. And um, and that's standard in that business. So you know, like. Let's just say a, among a regular car, like you go to a, a Ford dealer and get a Ford Motor Company, Ford Motor Credit loan. Let's just say that the repo rate there is 3%. The repo rate in a tote the note lot is probably 40%. You see what I'm saying? And the right. reason is, is they're selling the car for twice as much as it's worth. And they've got payments on it, and then it's a piece of crap car, and they ends up breaking anyway, and they get in the same mess. And so they're used to dealing with her. My point is they probably will negotiate that eight down if she goes somewhere else and gets a loan and gives them real money, like they will for sure. Okay. So I would send her, like, to the credit union and uh off you know offer them once she gets a loan arranged with the credit union maybe she gets a five thousand dollar loan and uh offer them the car back and the uh and two thousand dollars they'll probably take it take the okay. other take yeah. the other three thousand and buy a car anywhere else but a place like that Okay, in cash. So take out a five thousand dollar loan to do that. Yeah, go go get a five thousand dollar loan at the credit union. We're getting rid of a ten thousand dollar loan with this transaction. You following me? 
Yeah, I'm following you. So I'm I'm not borrowing. I mean, I'm borrowing money, but we've already got borrowed money. We're just making it better. So you okay. take you you go, you go then you go over there. In, are you in town the same town with her? No, again, this goes back to her being down with money. She ended up moving down to Texas, where the cost of living is a lot more than it is here in Indianapolis. So she's is she got any family in that town day. where she is? No, unfortunately, both our parents passed away, and that's another reason she yeah. wanted to move, just to kind of get away and restart. Yeah. Because um, just having dealt with these folk all the time for the last 30 years, uh, it, here's here's a best-case scenario. I'm not sure we can pull it off, but if she can go get a $5,000 loan at the credit union, uh, buy an airline ticket and go down there, get in, get her car and her, and drive over to that lot, and you sit down in front of that manager – it creates a different vibe in that world than her doing it. Okay. And you can go ahead and get up in his grill if you want for being a crook <laughs> as a part of this transaction and go, look, dude, if you think you're getting $10,000 out of this broke woman, you is what's known as confused. And so here's what we're going to do. We're going to give you this car back that's a piece of crap that you ripped her off with in the first place and $2,000 and you're going to smile and you're going to like it, aren't you? And that's that, <laughs> right. she, you can do that a whole lot better than she can do it in that world. You following me? I'm following you. And uh, I, I'm serious. That that's about the verbiage and the attitude I would use. I'm not being bombastic, because that you're you're okay. in a, you're in a rough and tumble world there. So go go in there uh, with that kind of you know swagger and and just go look. We're not doing this. You screwed her, and so now you're going to make it right, and you're going to make you're still going to make a profit. You got your stupid car back, and you got some money. You go on, you live another day, and you let her go. And this, otherwise, we're going to have a real problem here, and we're going to have to get lawyers involved, and we're going to have to get. Oh man, it's just going to be messy, and none of us want to do that. So let's just get us a deal done right here. Okay. If you can That's pull that, if you can pull that off in your schedule and buy a two hundred dollar plane ticket, fly down and help her handle it. Um, it sounds like I'm being sexist. I'm not, but that world is. Right. You're going to get a different. You're going to get a different thing when you walk in there than she will. And because uh, you know they saw her coming the first time, and she's going to have to reset in their brain for them to not see her coming again. And that that's that's what we're dealing with. When their entire business practice is built on desperation. Well, and intimidation. Right. Yeah. So we just flip that on them a little. Let's have a little discussion about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's that's the thing. So, yeah. Yeah. So here's the thing. When you're when, guys, when you're looking at stuff like this in uh, lower income real estate and lower income, uh, which is what tote the note is always associated with uh, what what the, the deal is not the interest rate that they're charging you. It's that they're giving you terms when no one else will give you terms. They'll put you on payments when no one else will put you on payments. And so they're making a bazillion dollars by changing the price of the item, not by charging a 30% interest rate. They may only charge a 20% interest rate, subprime interest rate, but then double the price of the car. Oh. You buy a house. I used to have friends that would sell houses in these uh, low-income neighborhoods, and they, they'd sell the house on weekly payments, mm. pay payments weekly, and with nothing down. Or $500 down, you could buy a house with weekly payments. Mm. And all the people heard was $500 down and weekly. That's all they heard. Mm. They didn't hear that the you know this house that's worth, in those days, 40000 $40, bucks is being sold to them for sixty, uh. And the interest rate sounded pretty good. So Until you factor in the fact that they're overcharging for the actual item so much, when you put that back in as an interest rate, now you got a 400% interest rate. I heard there was a crackdown on those Toth and Notes interest rates, and I guess that's the way that's they the way got you around fix it. it. That's the way you fix it. That's so it's not usurious if, you, if it's just the price is ridiculous. Yeah. And people aren't, they don't even look at the price. Right. All they're, they're just desperate it's to desperate. get. Can I get Desperate, that intimidated, yeah. scared, and... And it's almost like that caller earlier where the guy thinks that they're doing him a favor. That's right. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a disastrous scenario. So same thing with like rent to own. Yeah. You know, if, if you need to rent your washer and dryer, you don't need to buy a washer and dryer. Yeah. Period. You know. And someone's taking you. 
And right. so here, here's the thing. You can kind of look, too, at the groupings of these offerings. If you drive down the main drag of a lower income end of town, mm-hmm. all the things that you see there are just about ripoffs. The predatory, yeah. Yeah. Tidal pawn, yeah. pawn, uh, rent to own, yeah. uh, tote the note. Um, you know, it's all right there, and it's every one of them are screwing you. Yeah. A- and so, and same thing if you're watching TV and your investment is in the same place as a Snuggie and a walk in bathtub, <laughs> then you probably don't have a good investment. You're Hello. Right. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're not using Pure Talk for your wireless, you're paying too much. Pure Talk gives you the same great 5G coverage on the same 5G network as one of the big guys for half the cost. The average family saves over $800 a year. Go to puretalk.com and choose the affordable plan that's right for you. With their 30-day risk-free guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Go to puretalk.com and enter the promo code RAMSEY to save 50% off your first month. Ramsey personality is my co-host today in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Sean and Camille are with us. Hey guys, how are you? Hey, doing, doing good. Fine. How are you? Better than I deserve. Welcome. Where do you guys live? Clarksville, Tennessee. All right. Right fine. up the road. Yeah. Well, welcome to Nashville. It's good to have you guys. So how much debt have you paid off? $297,000. Wow. How long did that take? About four and a half years. Wow. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? 130 up to 260 yep. Nice jump. What do you guys do for a living? Uh, I work in healthcare as an HR director. Mm-hmm. I have an in-home business, and then I also do real estate on the side. Oh, good. Yeah. So what, what caused all this income increase? Me. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great I went, I went to work. <laughs> no, it was me. Yeah. It was me. Yeah. yeah. No, you went to work. You took a job to and the real estate thing's going well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Good for you. Good job. So what kind of debt was your 297000 Dave, we paid off our house. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Look at that weird people. Yes. yes. <laughs> there it is. How old are you two? I'm 33. Debt free by 33. That was our goal. Michael. She looks no, no older than 23 years. That's right. I agree. I'm well, 35. Way to go, you guys. Yeah. That's so cool. What's Thank this you. house worth? Probably about 460. <laughs> I love it. Way to That's go, you guys. That's a beautiful guys. house, y'all. <laughs> Thank look you. Nice. That's a good. Now we see a picture of it popping up yeah. here on YouTube. Wow. Yeah. Good looking property. Yeah. Thank, Thank Nicely you. done. Nicely done. So, how much in your investments in your retirement accounts? Uh, we were just talking about that about. Uh, 150 in our retirement already, so okay. off to a good start there. So you're going to be baby step millionaires in about three years. That's the plan. Yeah, so b- before you're 40, you'll be millionaires. <laughs> wow! That's crazy to think about. I know, I'm shaking. <laughs> that is so stinking cool! Way to go! Thank you. Oh, that is amazing. Well, tell us the story. What? How did all this start four and a half years ago? So I actually knew about you from college. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm a... I'm a saver hoarder. <laughs> He's a spender. We got married. We had some financial struggles the first couple years, just not being on the same page. And we finally found, you know, started listening to you a little bit more. And um, 
just needed a plan. I think we needed to be on the same page. That was the biggest thing for us is, you know, I had one idea and he had another idea and we we're like, we need to, we need something that works mm -hmm. that we can both go back to. So we um, paid off our consumer debt. The first couple of years of marriage was like $25,000. And then we kind of followed the baby steps and then we got pregnant with our first little one. Mm -hmm. And we were like, all right, we're, we're going to do this. We're going to go for it. And so that was about four and a half years ago. And we just started buckling down, getting really serious, making some sacrifices. and um, So what made you two come and say, all right, Ramsey is the plan we're going to do, and we're both going to commit to that? Yeah, I think we, uh, we knew of Dave right. plans for a while, but again, four and a half years ago, we got pregnant. So <laughs> we decided we better kick it into gear. So we got connected. We went to FPU. Uh, uh, we've actually started uh, coordinating the class. We have oh, our wow. coordinator over here as well. <laughs> All Alicia, right. So shout out. Uh, got connected with the church as well, but family and friends uh, definitely had the support system around us. Okay. All right. So the Financial Peace University class convinced you that that's the way, uh, yeah. and that gave you both a, the same sheet of music to sing from. Absolutely. Well, the, the biggest thing for me, I think, that pulled me in, and probably for you too, was the changing your family tree. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I'm the oldest of six kids and we, you know, there was never a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And so, um, it's kind of emotional. It, there was just always fights involving mm -hmm. it. And mm -hmm. I just was like, I don't want to, I don't want to live that way. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't want to fight about money and I wanted something better for our kids. So that was the thing that just over and over again, I was like, we got to change our family tree. We can do this. And I'm very, um, I, I understand about making decisions and I'm very motivated. And so I, you know, I, I it just made sense. It was simple. It was easy to do. I'm a checklist person. I could get him on board. He's an HR, so. <laughs> <laughs> Which could be challenging at times. I know I'm a spender at heart, so, but um, yeah, just stay connected and get with the plan and yeah. It, it's amazing. We're so here. I'm looking at this timeline here, and you grew another human in between this. Yeah. <laughs> How in the world do you stay on this plan and have yet another new person in your home? That was, it was hard. It was that. I mean, people make it sound like it's easy. It is not easy. Um, they're 15 months apart. I basically had two under two for a while, and um, 2020 for everybody, I think, was kind of a disaster, and it was really hard. We had some family stuff that kind of went down, and um, I think part of me just was like, I, I've got to focus on something. I've mm. got to I've got to get my mind on something that's positive, something that makes me feel like we're winning. So and many people focused on Tiger King, and you <laughs> didn't. I did watch Tiger King, <laughs> of though. Of course you did. did. That's fine. <laughs> but you focused on something that, right, you took that, that time when everything was in smoke and rubble, and you said, I'm going to build something great out of this. That's yeah. incredible, you yeah. two. And it's funny because once you actually like get really serious, and I mean, we didn't need to do be beans and rice per se. We just worked our butts off, mm -hmm. and it just it was so good. Like it was it just to have something that was positive when the world felt like it was falling apart. And I was like, at least I just want to sleep it good at night. Like I just want this weight off of me. Um, well, when you can't control anything, if you find something you can finally control, it's worth doing. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, it, it, you're spinning out otherwise. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, the this, this sense of, uh, I, I, the, at least I can control this part. Exactly. And so let's do that. And, and that, that somewhat keeps you sane when everything's just going, fall, flying off the handle. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know, so, wow, very powerful. What was your best disagreement? Best disagreement? You know, we didn't have a ton. Um, I just looked at the HR director's face. He's got one. I saw it. <laughs> yeah. what, what do you have? <laughs> I, I think it's the budgets in general just to, just to stay on track. So, of course, uh, every month just looking at that and, yeah, it, you got to change something, right? So I'm always annoyed <laughs> by just sitting down and reviewing it. But I think it's a good a good thing to do. But, yeah. no. Nope, nope. Well, let me say this. So he had some things he wanted when we paid the house off ah, because I'm the penny pincher. Mm -hmm. And so we, we – he got a hot tub. Yeah. And his Titan season tickets. Yeah. Oh, so all right. Ding, ding. When we were That's struggling, right. I was like, we're not doing that. We're not doing it. I was like, okay, we can do that hey, when. You live like no one else. Later, yeah. you get the season tickets in the hot tub. There exactly. you go. That's how it works. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Perfect. Pretty cool, man. Pretty cool, man. Seems yeah. like a fair trade to Dead me. Dead free by 33. That's, that's a slogan that's right there. That's a slogan. It, it, everything. It was. I, yeah, I told we, everybody. Uh, they probably all thought I was crazy. I don't know. We, we got support. They for support. sure did. A hundred percent they did. Yeh, yes. We got yes. support, but people were just kind of like, okay, you go do that. That's good for you. And I'm good at doing stuff that people look at me like, you're weird, but 
That's perfect. I'm fine being weird. Yeah, you, you're you the best kind of weird. <laughs> when it comes to money, normal sucks. You don't Amen. want to be normal. When it comes to most <laughs> things, normal sucks. You don't want to be normal. So you guys are powerful. Well done. Very well done. We Thank got you. a copy of Baby Steps Millionaires for you. That's the next chapter in your story. We've already run the math. It's only going to be a couple of years for you. You're going to be there. Very cool. And That's a awesome. copy of Total Money Makeover for you to give away and get someone else stirred up. One of those people that thought you were weird. Maybe now they'll listen to you. How you like me now? <laughs> Yeah, I like it. I like it. And you got the kiddos. You want to put them in the shot? Yeah. Absolutely. All right. What are their names and ages? Dallas is four, and Dakota just turned three. So All right. Apart. Here we go. All right. Kiddos. I love ready. it. I love it. Changed your family tree. You, you did, did it. Well done. All right. It's Sean and Camille, Dallas and Dakota from Clarksville, Tennessee. $297,000 paid off. House and everything. They're weird. <laughs> four and a half years, making 130 to 260 Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free show. Scream! You ready, Dallas? Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're dead dead free. free. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Ten years old, they can watch that video. Mom and Dad doing that dead free scream back when I was four. Yep. And that's when the family tree changed. Yep. That's how that branch of the family became some of the first millionaires in that family. That's how that branch of the family never fought about money again. That's how that branch of the family ended up in that church. That's how that, thank you, Financial Peace University coordinators, for teaching that at your local church. Look what happens when you do. I'm so proud of you. Wow. This is The Ramsey Show. going out there folks if you're like most people uh, you hit january hard but by valentine's day you were done you tapped out don't tap out we can actually show you how to turn your resolutions into actual goals that are achievable in bite size and uh, you will stay on the plan you'll keep moving we do that like you just heard a minute ago in financial peace university you go through this class and you will not only learn the steps, you'll have people around you encouraging you to do the steps, holding you accountable to do the steps. It's a proven plan that almost 10 million people have been through now. Right now, there's hundreds of Financial Peace University classes getting started, both in person and online. Good time for you to jump in right now. No lame resolutions, actual adult-like goals. Make 2022 the year you get control. Go to RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. That's RamseySolutions.com slash FPU. Yesterday, John, we put uh, the Smart Conference on sale in Dallas. We're going to go out there October the 22nd. Very you cool. and me and the Ramsey personalities, Ken Coleman, George Camel, Craig Groeschel, and Amy Groeschel, our friends from Life Church over in Oklahoma City, are going to be teaching on marriage. Um, you'll be teaching from the new book, Own Your Past, Change Your Future. Uh, we might have a little Baby Steps Millionaires action in there. could happen, yeah. too. Uh, and, uh, you know, Ken Coleman, of course, about careers. And Rachel will be there. Pedro will be there. Christina will be there. Courtney will be there. Eddie will be there. All the Ramsey personalities are going to be there. The whole gang, the man. The whole dad blame bunch. The whole fam damnly. That is going to be a loud plane ride. 
<laughs> you know what? It will be. I may drive myself. It will be because I'm going to take they, an Uber to, to Dallas. They, you know, there's a couple of these people never shut up. So, yeah, Ooh. you're probably right. That could be interesting. But I'll tell you what, they all got something to say. Yes, they do. And the smart conference, especially with Amy and Greg being Craig being there on the marriage subject, is just going to be incredible. So if you don't have your tickets yet, they went on sale. The early bird specials are still out there. You can get a deal if you go ahead and purchase them now. We're so excited to be back in the arenas, back in the marketplace, back out here doing events again. It is our favorite thing to do. We've all missed it around here. We've missed you guys. So we're kicking it off with this smart conference in Dallas, October 22nd. Stay tuned. We're going to do some building wealth events in a bunch of other cities uh, starting this spring over into the fall. We'll be announcing those really, really soon. So just count on it. Ramsey's rolling back out, baby. We're going to let the big wheel roll. Time to get after it again. Time to get things moving. You can get all of that information at RamseySolutions.com and just click on events. You can find everything that we're doing there. We've got the Entree Leadership Summit in May in Orlando. Uh, we're going to be adding some stuff to that Orlando date. We're going to be down around that area doing a bunch of stuff. So you people in Orlando, get ready. Just getting ready. Go ahead and tell you there's going to be some announcements coming your way in addition to the Entree Leadership Summit. So uh, we, we've just made a decision around wait. here for to get moving again. Can't wait. I've been on the road the, all fall and doing smaller events, and I can't wait to get back out and do some big stuff, man. Yeah, I'm going over to Elevation Church yeah. and speak for Stephen Furtick yeah. in a couple of weeks in March. Uh, he, he texted me the other day, and wonderful church. Stephen's been a friend for a lot of years. Uh, I'm going over in uh, Life Church and speak yeah. for Craig yeah. uh, as well. Uh, he's a little, in, little bitty old church March. he's got. Yeah, it's a tiny little thing, <laughs> tiny little operation over there. Largest church in America. It's like 80,000 people or something. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. So... Um, Hey, it's a lot of stuff happening, and here we go, baby. Game on, game on. So, uh, if you, uh, you know, if you got a friend that you've been trying to get to do this stuff, you know, you need to get tickets. To Smart Conference, go ahead and buy them tickets too, and get them there. You, you, some of these other events you hear us doing them, you need to bring somebody. You need to tell people about it. And by the way, I don't say that very often on this show, but um, I've been remiss to not ask you guys that are listeners to help us by telling your friends to listen yeah if you're listening on podcast or youtube or on your local radio station or sirius xm spread the word this is where you get the ramsey show and it's life-changing information here um it's not because it's mine it's god's and grandma's ways of handling money and life and uh, none of us invented these things we just uh put a package them and teach them in such a way that they're ingestible and that you can really use them to change your life oh and by the way you could have crap on Instead of something that's helpful. Right. And so you got to decide what you're going to put in your brain. You keep putting crap in your brain, your brain's going to be crap. It's time for you to get with some people and get out of your house, you know, go do stuff together. Yeah. These kind of things can spark entire communities to change. It can friend groups to change, family groups to change. Get a couple of folks and come out. I don't think people realized um, consciously until the last few months how much uh the this idea that man is not good for man to be alone the, this isolation uh from other people h- how uh, psychologically damaging it is and it was re- it's also revealing simultaneously to me the weak spots in uh this social media oh, man. where people don't have real friends they have facebook friends and by the way your facebook friends are not real friends they're fake friends Okay, and so unless they also happen to be your friend who you actually see in the flesh, look at them in their real eyes and that kind of thing. And so your followers on Instagram are not real. That's not real. I've got I I got what have I got two million on Instagram. Yeah. And you know how many of them I know personally? Three. (laughs) Yeah. You and James and Kelly. You and James and Kelly. That's three. My wife. Yeah. Rachel. Yeah. I know all of y'all. Oh, my wife doesn't follow me. So I don't. And so. And, uh, you know, and, and the, you know, you get these, it's funny, some of these people that think they know something about social media go, oh, Ramsey, you're, you're doing this all wrong, man. You, you only follow 33 people and you have 2 million people following you. You're supposed to follow a bazillion people, man. You're doing it all wrong. And I'm like, no, you, you, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> because, so I- because you forgot the idea that human connection is a 
It's big everything. deal. It's everything. That's why we're relishing going to football games. Yeah. That's why we're relishing going to an Eagles concert. It's why we're relishing going to a Ramsey Smart conference because we're in the presence of other human beings that have a like-minded uh, goals and yeah. values, and we're aiming at something together. Uh, we're not sitting somewhere looking at a screen and calling it a conversation. Somebody, I was on an interview the other day, and they asked me, "Was the tra- it was about trauma, and the, the interviewer asked me, dude, I think this trauma that we just experienced, we're experiencing coming out of, was on par with 9-11 a- as a country. And I said, no, I think this one's actually worse. Oh, definitely. Because 9-11, we had at least, we had the, whether it's an illusion, we had a common enemy, yeah. and it was them. And this time it was... Well, maybe that woman walking her dog might kill me, or maybe my kid coming home from school might. What's happening? And we weaponized each yeah. other, right? I went to get, you know, I went to buy a loaf of bread, milk and, and eggs, and and, the, and, the, and and all of a sudden, you know, I'm a villain. Yeah, or someone's going to kill you, or you're going to kill all these other people, and we weaponized the most core human function, which is human connection. It just turned into a weapon, and then it got politicized, and then we all everyone went crazy. It went crazy, yeah. and we went from flattening the curve to masking to vaccine to beating each other up with the curve yeah, and to, to everything else, and yeah. just panicking. Yeah, and the the, uh, the the it was yeah it was much more devastating than nine eleven. Yeah, to the, to, the, the, to, the to fractured the, the psyche to the culture. Yeah, to the culture. It's gonna be a long time digging out of this one, but there's a, the antidote. It's other people is, is relationships That's in person all day every day real relationships right. in person this is the antidote it to is. not only what happened there but what has happened with the uh, this fake social media revolution right. is being exposed now as fake yep uh facebook's tanking consequently <laughs> it's tanking uh because people are starting to go it's not real well that's why we called it virtual well <laughs> it's back in the day when they used to give my, my granddad i think uh, it was one of his teachers or a coach gave him cigarettes because it calmed him down when he was 10 and <laughs> it worked it did and then we realized oh that'll kill you too right so yeah this was all fun and games for a couple of 10 years or 15 years till we realized oh man it's gonna kill us all yeah. so yeah we gotta get back in the same room with each other talk to each other again and, and you know attend some things i'm making myself go do i am things too. in the presence of, and, I am and, and i'm making our organization start to do these events yeah and even if it's uncomfortable and even if some of you out there are pissed off just go ahead and get ready to be pissed off because we're doing it <laughs> okay because i i know you're scared and i understand you're scared and i'm sorry you're scared but we're doing it we're going to get back out here and, and, and help people again and move the dadgum needle and if you don't like that well you don't have to come it's that easy come anyway but we'd like to have you anyway Come anyway. Well, don't come if you're miserable. Don't, no, come don't, anyway. don't make everybody miserable. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. Hey, it's Kelly, associate producer and phone screener for the Ramsey Show. If you would like to do your debt free screen live on the show, make sure you visit theramseyshow.com and register. We would love for you to come to Nashville and tell Dave your story. about your character. You can have money and a career. You are the hero in your story. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where debt is dumb, cash is king, and the paid-off home mortgage has taken the place of the BMW as the status symbol of choice. Dr. John Deloney, Ramsey personality, best-selling author, and host of the Dr. John Deloney podcast, which is ever so popular on the Ramsey Networks, is my co-host today as we talk about your relationships, your mental health, your boundaries, your family, your work, your career, and your money. We talk about all these things on Ramsey every day. We're glad you're here. The Ramsey Show. 888-825-5225 is the number. And uh, Mitchell is with us in South Lake Tahoe, California. Hey, Mitchell, what's up? Hello, Hello Dave. How's it going? Better than I deserve. How can we help? Um, so I've been following your show for about a year now, and um, I have a tip-based job, and I make minimum wage, but 
with the tips, it's hard to kind of follow all of the, all of the rules and stuff. Um, I'm trying to figure out what I should do, like my next step. You know what I mean? Cool. So you're not making minimum wage. You're making good money serving, right? Yeah, it's actually a, I'm a limo driver. I'm a chauffeur. Oh, okay. What do you make? Yeah. What's your total you're making um, in a week? Tips and tips and pay. I would say total probably eight hundred dollars a week, and on average. Good for you. Good for you. Yeah. Okay. Here's the way you need to do a budget, and all the rules do work. You just got to use them a little differently. Okay. Right. What I want you to do is I want you to make a list, and you could do it. You could start doing it with a yellow pad. You can use the Every Dollar app and modify it and use it this way as well. But let's just do it on a yellow pad right now in your mind so you can follow the principle. Okay? Just get a yellow pad out in your head. You see it in your head right now? I do, yeah. Okay. Now make a list down that page of every single thing you need to do with money or want to do with money this month. And just start putting dollar amounts beside all of it, all the way down that page in your mind. You don't have to do them all right now, but that's what you're going to do. Then once you get that list made, I want you to look at that list and say, if I only make enough money to buy one thing because this month sucks, what is the most important thing on this page? I'll help you with that. It's food. Put a number one beside food and put a dollar amount beside it. Okay. I've always put rent, so I think that's wrong. <laughs> yeah. Well, rent's going to be a little bit down the ways, but you'll get there in a minute. Okay. Number two okay. is utilities. Okay. Number three is rent. Okay. Because you got to keep the lights on and then pay the rent. If you pay the rent and don't have any lights, you you, you get cold. Right. So we're going to, but you got enough easy to do these three things anyway. So you put dollar amounts beside, you go food, utilities, shelter. You have a car payment? Um, no, I actually, three Wonderful. months after I started watching, I got debt free, so I was pretty happy Wonderful. Cool, Way man. to go. Way to go. Okay. Yeah. So now you just keep going down the list and say, okay, what's the next most important thing? And put a number beside it. What's the next most important thing? And put a number beside it. What's the next most important thing? And you put a number beside it. So you got one through 36 or whatever it is down the page in order of importance, in order of priority. Are you following me? I do, yeah. And they all have a dollar amount beside them. So when you get some money from a paycheck or a tip, you look at the, uh-huh. you look at the list, and wherever you are on the list, you start there and work your way down. And so the first thing we're going to do is okay. we're going to set some money aside in an envelope for food. We write food on the envelope, and we set that in the kitchen drawer, and we don't buy anything from that envelope except food. And we don't buy any food except right. from that envelope. Right. And that keeps you right on budget. Then the next thing you're going to do is you're going to pay your electric bill. The next money you get, you're going to go ahead and pay your rent. And the next money you get, you're going to do the next thing. And the next money you get, you're going to do the next thing. And ever so often, you're going to draw lines through the ones above that you've done, and you can rewrite the list. As a matter of fact, you could do it once a week and rewrite the list because it might change a little bit from week to week. It does, yeah, every week. Yeah, not only your income. No, because we don't know how far down the list you're going to go because we don't know exactly what your tips are going to be. You could have a $1,200 week or you could have a $600 week. We don't know, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, so we don't know how far down the list you're going to get this week. But you do have a list, and every dollar that you're going to make is already spent because the list needs to be longer than you're going to make. Right, that makes sense. But let's say, so, let's say um, you're in the third week of this and the rent's already paid and the lights are already paid and the food's already in the cabinets. You, when you rewrite the list, you don't have to put those on next week. Next week's going to be a week where you get to do some stuff down in there, like paying off debt or putting some money in savings or increasing your generosity or something like that. And, and so, But you've got a prioritized list. And, John, this is how Sharon and I lived with that literal yellow pad. There was no internet. There was no apps. We had a yellow pad like that. And because I was in the real estate business when I first started doing these principles, and I would have a month where I would make $20,000 and I'd have a month where I made zero. Yeah. And so we were taking some of that money and setting it up for the next month if we had a big month. Mm-hmm. And we're, but we're going through food. If we make just a little bit of money, we eat. <laughs> first thing we do. Kid, you know, kids got to eat. Yeah. Got babies. It's a formula and diapers and, you know, we got to go to the grocery store. What's the next thing we're going to do? We keep the lights on and the heat on. Yeah. The cool the air conditioner on. And, and what's the next thing we're going to do? We're going to keep the house, you know, and, and you can usually get your basic life done. And then you start to relax a little bit emotionally because your, your survival is now guaranteed. You're, you're, you're sustainable. Right. And, and, but that priority that those yellow pads, um, 
Sharon was telling one of our friends at dinner the other night that she said, and we kept another yellow pad of goals mm. that we want to knock off. Big things we want to do. We want to do this. We want to do this. We want to do this. And we had that prioritized. Mm. And uh, so as we got a little extra money, you know, like when we're driving a piece of crap car, we had to get her a better car. Mm -hmm. And so that's a goal. That's over on another yellow pad. And we would just jump back and forth between these yellow pads. But it was all about listing and prioritization. And then it gives you something to work for. That's right. And it's an intentionality. He, he can, if he's got something he's trying to hit, he can take an extra shift. That's right. He can take that ride that he doesn't want to take after midnight, which is gross a lot of times, you know, your limo, yeah. you know. And so, uh, or he could take a, you know, a Sunday morning early to the airport that he didn't want to get up at four. But he can go take that if he's trying to hit a goal because he can get that extra tip. And if you don't have anything to live for, if you don't have anything to work towards, you just because it's not listed out, yeah. you just go, why do I work, you know, and you spin your wheels out. But you'll increase your income doing this. But you also have a few weeks to look at. Oh, I may not hit my food. I need to come up with something. Yeah. And it doesn't surprise you week of or day of, right? Yeah. You can see it coming. Yeah. And because there is a plan. That's right. And, and the, the point is you're still spending every dollar on paper on purpose before the month begins. Mm -hmm. Don't wait till you get the check, people, to try to figure out what you're going to do with the check. Mm -hmm. Always have it already spent already assigned before it comes to you to something before it comes to you always do that the rest of your life hmm. and i even do that with high net worth people high income earners like i was with an nfl guy the day who's getting a multi-million dollar bonus coming mm -hmm. and um had a good year and uh, he's like well, what do i do with this and i said i don't know but let's go ahead and do it before you get it yeah you know put a percentage on it okay i'm gonna i'm gonna live on 10 percent of it and have a great life you know and i'm gonna give an extra 10% and I'm going to invest and whatever it is you got you need to give those dollars an assignment before you get them mm. because what happens is you will spend that check that's coming oh, man. like 10x so fast in your head yeah. no you you spend it 10 times yeah <laughs> you act like it's 10 times more money than it is 5 to 10 times more money it's not as much money as your little brain thinks it is until you put it on paper oh. this is the Ramsey show If you're considering a career in technology, I recommend Bethel Tech, and I'm not alone. Here's what Brendan said. Before Bethel Tech, I was driving Uber. Within four months of graduating, I got a job paying $60,000. About two years after that, I got a remote job that pays me $130,000, all thanks to what I learned at Bethel Tech. You could be next. Get started today at BethelTech.net and get $1,000 to $2,500 off of your tuition. Again, it's BethelTech.net slash Ken Coleman. Over the last 30 years, I've walked with tens of thousands of people and their families to help them overcome their financial stress. We found money stress is one of all the kinds of ways that we actually experience stress. There's anxiety and loneliness. There's all kinds of crazy in our families. We've had lies told about us, well-meaning people, not well-meaning people. There's all kinds of trauma that happens in our lives. The good news is the guy sitting to my right, Dr. John Deloney, my co-host today, has a brand new book out called 
Own Your Past, Change Your Future. It's available for pre-order today. It'll help you deal with all kinds of trauma, get connected to a community, make friends as an adult, and the steps that you can take to change your thoughts and actions. And uh, you get free bonus items when you go ahead and buy it for $20 now, including a month of one-on-one therapy with the folks at BetterHelp. And you get the audio book and you get the ebook and all kinds of other stuff. It's several hundred dollars worth of stuff, total package. And so you really it's an unbelievable deal to buy this book for twenty dollars in pre-order. And John, I, the the thing that is, I can't wait to get this book out in the wild. I can't either, man. Yeah. Where people start, because I, I, I've got, I I think I know what's going to happen hmm. with it. Um, but but it's just, but I I am a little bit worried. Maybe I got forced in the trees. You know, what I mean, I'm I'm hmm. too close to it because I read it before anybody else hardly. And I mean, there's like six or eight of us in the reading group as you're putting it together. And uh, but what's happened here is the not so complicated approach uh, to relationships, mental health, and wellness. You took a very complicated subject of what happens in our bodies, our brains in our emotions and our psychology when we are when we all have trauma when we have trauma a big t little t trauma and uh broke it down came at it through a different door than i've ever seen before and this, this the i just think the power of story is everything and, and you use stories to talk about how we're dealing with this yeah it, it most of us don't know that the, the loops that we just live on a loop man we just live on a loop and live on a loop and these things that we were born into the things we were told and yeah I, I, you know it was a it was a i just was talking to some folks from my old higher ed days last week and i was talking to them about how convicting it was i spent the last 20 years talking with brilliant people wonderful people and we talked about theories and ideas and maps let's look at the data and then i came here and went, it's every day talking to that single mom and that dad who just wants to be better and this family that can't seem to get over the hump and I realized, this is, I'm not indicting anybody else other than myself, I'd been speaking past people for 20 years. I'd been trafficking in ideas and theories, and I had not been about, how can I help this person right here hurting right now? Put the cookies on a shelf where we can reach them. Well, and what purpose is any of the highfalutin thinking that we're right. doing exactly. if we're not doing that? So, yeah, this book was the number of people who reach out and say, hey, man, could would you do private coaching? Would you do, be my therapist? I can't do that. This is as close as I could get to sitting across the table from somebody saying, I love you. I'm going to sit with you and let's do this together. Because I've been through it too, man. Right? Mm-hmm. I've been buried by this stuff too. And I've been married. We'll celebrate 20 years this year. Yesterday on the flight home in, in the middle of the night, <laughs> I thought, I don't know you. Right? So I, I'm living this too. And um, man, I, I haven't been more proud of something. I think probably my entire professional career than this thing. I'm excited yeah. for it. The notes that I'm getting back. Here's the cool stuff. It's the notes from the people working working on the email campaign mm-hmm. that say, "Hey, I had to read this. My boss made me." Mm-hmm. And oh man, right? It's it's the folks who don't normally resp- write me notes. That it's, it's I'm excited for it. Yeah, it, it's um, it is a subject that is very rarely put within reach of us mortals. There you go. And you put it in reach of people like me, where I can see it. I know. I now understand it, and I know exactly what to do with it. And, um, and it's not that it's oversimplified or dumbed down. Um, it just takes a lot of brain power to take a complicated thing and make it simple. Can I tell you the truth? I wrote it for me because I can distance myself from the complexity of things and then be sitting there on my phone when my six-year-old wants to talk to me. I can know all this stuff. So this book is not overly simple at all. It's hard. But it's for me, right? It's for all of us. And it's it's not for, I, I don't know. I'm excited about it, man. Um, Own your past. Yeah, I'm excited about it. Change your future. So the stories that we're telling ourselves that are holding us back, the stories that we're telling ourselves that are weighing us down, we can write new stories. That's exactly right. And that's what it comes down to. It's, a, it's, a, it's the new third way, man. There's that crew telling you that you, this happened to you and you're going to be a victim the rest of your life. You can't move. And we saw somebody earlier today. I refuse to be a victim any longer, right? And then you got the other side that's, you know, feelings don't feelings aren't real. Just grind it and keep going. This is a new third way, man. You got to own that stuff, and then you got to say what comes next. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm gonna say that it's real, and then I'm gonna put it in the rearview mirror. And then I'm gonna get to going about living my life. What, yeah. what comes yeah. next? Yeah. I really went through bankruptcy, mm-hmm. but it's not. It, it, and it, and it, 
change the trajectory of my life, but it didn't define the entirety of my life. That's right. And I would even say, you've never said this out loud. I would say there's a part, if, I, if you and I were to spend 10 hours together, that there were some guys who put on some seminars that took advantage of a 25-year-old kid who really wanted to do right in the world and wanted to, you know, like, hey, just do these things, right? There was even some, you you are good about taking ownership. I own all that. But there are some folks, I think, that would take advantage of young kids, right? Things happen to you. And then you said, okay, here's my participation in this. And now what am I going to do starting tomorrow? Like, yeah. what am I going to do when I wake up and do this? And so whether people did stuff to you, you participated in it, I don't care how we got to here. You got to own well, that what I, crap yeah, and then go. But, but yeah, it's not, a, it's not a completely thing where I tell you, you know, we, we had some bankers that completely broke the law. There you go. That's right. You got and posed, a, and, a, and, and, and we're doing some things that absolutely, I mean, we're, immoral. Ill, we're straight, all, straight up immoral and illegal right. and, and, and forced, you know, because they thought we were going broke and they were scared about their portfolio and they were going after us and they've you know, create a self-fulfilling prophecy. Uh, so, the, yeah, there's a part they played in that. The tax law changed under Reagan. Reagan, there's a part he played in me going broke. You know, uh, there, there's a part that, um, and I'm a Ronald Reagan fan, yeah, you know, yeah. but, but, you know, the law, life happens. the law screwed up the banking system. Right. And uh, made the SNLs go broke. Yeah. And uh, we had a bunch of stuff with SNLs. And so, you know, there, there's, yeah, and, and yeah, there was get rich quick seminars that I bought into the crap. Mm-hmm. And, uh, b- but, uh, I can't really affect all of that. You can affect none of it. The right? only thing I can affect is what you what do I did. And That's I right. go, okay, so I'm not going to put myself where I'm vulnerable to those kinds of people That's ever right. again. That's right. Never again. You know, it's really going to be hard for American Express to call my house and try to, you know, yell at my wife about a bill that's unpaid because we will never do business with American Express again. I'm not going to be susceptible to them right. under any circumstances. And so if American Express calls my house, it's a wrong number. Right. You know, or a robo call for a warranty on the car. You know, I mean, oh, my God. And, and you, you talked about it in an earlier segment. Your path out wasn't pretty. It was you and your wife and a couple of yellow pads, right? Yeah. It, oh, no. It did. It's it not like nothing. money just fell from the sky. There was no manna. No. Um, it was two people on a yellow pad. The grind out of this thing is hard, but it's absolutely doable. But you just take the – you rewrite the story and go, okay, there's a couple never agains here. Yep. There's a couple never again. So I'm not going to be put in that position again to where uh, if I'm the victim of something else, it'll be something else. It won't be that again. There you go. Because I'm not going to set myself in. I'm not going to walk down that alley and get mugged again. That's right. I walk down that alley. I'm not going down that alley again. That's right. The borrower is slave to the lender. I don't borrow money. That's right. I'm not going down that alley again. Some of that stuff is about trauma, which I talk about in the book. Some of it's about grief, which I talk about. Some of it is as simple as we talked about earlier. I'm 40 years old and I don't know how to make I got I don't have a classroom where I just have insta friends anymore how do you even do that anymore yeah we talk about making friends and it almost feels reductive but that's where we are yep. right here's here's how you go make friends again so it, yep. it covers a lot of bases there own your past change your future on pre-sale now at ramseysolutions.com John Deloney, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Jeff and Christy are in Pennsylvania. It says on my screen, you guys are debt-free. Congratulations. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Well done. How much have you paid off? Uh, $245,880. All right. How long did this take? (laughs) Three years and three months. All right. Good for you guys. And your range of income during that time? So we started out around 124 
124,000 and we ended up at 180,000. Very good. Very good. Way to go. What do you guys do for a living? Uh, I am an RN and um, Jeff, I am a carpenter. Good, good. What kind of debt was the 246,000? So the biggest portion of it was the mortgage. And then I had quite a bit of student loans. That was a a huge part of it. Um, A little bit was a car we financed, and a very, very small portion was a credit card. Wow. So you're kind of normal. Yeah. (laughs) How long you guys been married? Uh, (laughs) uh, Seven years. Jeff, you got to have that number right on top of your head, brother. (laughs) So uh, how much was the student loan again? Uh, I think I originally was around eighty thousand, but we were already plugging away at it. So when we um, when we really got serious about paying down debt, I think I had it down to about forty thousand. Okay, I'm confused. I missed something. Two hundred and forty six thousand. Yeah. You paid off your mortgage. Yes, we paid off our mortgage. Oh, I missed that. Oh, okay. I, I missed Whoa. it too. Whoa. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. And so, how much of this was mortgage? Oh, the majority. The okay. majority of it. Okay. So way to go, guys. You're weird people. <laughs> I love it. Yep. Very good. What's the house worth? Uh, we're probably worth about low threes. I'd say like around uh, three twenty yeah, right 300s. now. Yeah, low three hundreds. The market's very good, so it's, yeah. worth, it's worth a good amount right now. So three hundred thousand. And you guys yep. are how old? I am fifty one, and I am forty four. And you have a paid for house. Yep. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. And you two have had a really boring last few years as a carpenter and a nurse, huh? <laughs> Happened, Never stopped working through the pandemic. Can't even imagine you two flying by each other in the night. Good grief. I'm so grateful for both of you. <laughs> Man, there was a, a lot of that at times. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much essential yeah. workers, yeah, for sure. So what yeah. caused you three years and three months ago to start this plan? I think we just decided, well, well, part of it was I was looking into, like, you know, let's get control of our debt, let's control our finances. I started to think about retirement, and I started to panic a little bit about that. Um, And we ended up registering for your Financial Peace University class, Um, went through the whole program, and that really sort of kick-started our our process to getting all of this paid off. Cool. At your church or online? Uh, We started with the church and then had to switch to online. Okay. All right. Wow. So game on. Three years and three months, house and everything is done. Mic yeah, drop. Looks best. <laughs> wow. Wow. Absolutely fabulous. Way to go, guys. How's it feel to not have a payment in the world? You know, it, it takes a while for it to soak in. You know, after you're done, you're like, okay, well, nothing's felt like it changed. You know, you're still the same person. You go to the same job, you do the same thing. It's just there is an element of stress that's just not there. And I get to keep all my money. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's not going to some yeah, stupid and, bank. And we were so close to getting paid off and right towards the end, um, our furnace and our water heater broke. Of course it, it did. Anything, <laughs> it wasn't anything we could fix. We had to literally replace them. But thanks to the uh, emergency fund, we were able to pull out nine, the 9,500 it took to fix that and still get out of debt. <laughs> wow. Way to go. Way to go, you guys. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Uh, It's really about discipline and changing your habits, and then, of course, setting the goal. And uh, supporting each other was huge. I mean, there were times we were stressed, and, you know, it took every last penny to get through the month, but we just supported each other because we had the same vision. That's a big deal. Yeah. It is. Uh, And and, um, were you guys handling money together before you started this? Sort of, yeah. 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 (laughs) (laughs) That's the least convincing answer. Uh, yeah, yeah. maybe not. We are now. We definitely work at everything as a team now. Yeah. <laughs> now it's got now it's got some clothes on it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Way to go, you guys. Way to go. Well done. Did you have cheerleaders outside the two of you? Yeah, we have some friends that are uh, very uh, supportive. That was helpful. Um, and they actually recently paid their mortgage off too. So. Hey. <laughs> Anybody tell you you were crazy? Um, yeah, I would say. A few, but, you know, we really kind of kept it, kept it under our hat because uh, people just get funny about it. You know, when family can be funny and friends can be funny when it comes down to money. So yeah, we just not like funny, ha-ha. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. no. <laughs> like funny, go home. Yes. <laughs> like crazy yeah. funny. You're crazy. Yeah, yeah I like it. Yeah. Well done, y'all. Well done. Well, we've got a copy of the Baby Steps Millionaire's number one bestseller for you guys, because that's the next chapter in your story for sure. What's your uh, investment accounts amount to right now? Uh, that's an area we need to work on. Um, I know my 401 is just under 100. Uh-huh. Yeah, and, and I think I'm around like one one. 30, 150, somewhere around there. We got a ways to go with that. Okay. Well, you're worth a half million dollars already. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the house. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. House part of it. That's an asset. Yep. Well done. And, uh, you know, so, you, you know, you're going to be Baby Steps Millionaires in no time. So we'll send you a copy of the book. You finish this journey now and play all the way through. Well done. Very, very well done. And a copy of Total Money Makeover, too, for you to give away to somebody who's just getting started. And it'll show them exactly what to do step by step, how to work these baby steps, how to work that, that snowball, all the stuff you guys have done. And you can hand it to a friend and encourage them. That'll be great. Okay. So, great. Good stuff. Thanks. Well done. Jeff and Christy, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, $246,000 paid off in three years and three months, making 124 to 180. House and everything, they're weird people. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. We're We're debt-free. Yeah! (laughs) They didn't even need to count. That's how it's done. That is how it's done right there. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Mike is in Anchorage, Alaska. Mike, what's up? Hey, Dave. How's it going? Better than I deserve. How can I help? Um, So I just wanted to bounce something off you real quick and see what my family should do next. So I'm currently in the military, and our annual income is 130 is our Um, take-home. We plan on renting for the next nine years. And my question is, I'm going to be maxing my 401k this year. We also are maxing of IRA, Roth IRA for my wife. Should we, and I just found out we can max our 2021 Roth IRAs up until the tax deadline. Up until you file, yeah. File or tax deadline, whichever's first, yeah. Correct. So we have $40,000 in our bank account. Mm -hmm. Should we double max two IRAs yep. and then continue to do that moving forward. Yep. 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 Is yep, it yep. ever possible to overinvest in retirement? Mm, you're probably not going to get there, but yeah, okay. you could, you could have so much there that you, I mean, let, let's say you were 30 years old and you had $2 million in retirement. You probably need to have some outside retirement starting so that you can access some money before 59 and a half. But, um, very few people actually hit that hit that position. You might hit it. Uh, if you look up and you got millions and millions in retirement and you still got a ways before you can be 59 and a half, then, yeah, you may want to slow down and reach over and do what we call bridge investing to get ready for that, make up for that difference there. But, yeah, you're right on track. I, I would keep doing what you're doing. The other thing you need to think about doing since you're running the military route, by the way, thank you for your service, is um, you may want to think about having some side investing right now. And if that is if that slows down your retirement a little bit, that's okay to get ready to buy a house. Let's have a house fund where you're putting money in mutual funds to where 10 years from today you write a check for that house when you do buy after you come out of the military. This is The Ramsey Show. Scripture of the day, Psalm 62, 8, trust in him at all times, pour out your heart to him, for he is our refuge. 
Charles Swindoll said, we are all faced with a series of great opportunities brilliantly disguised as impossible situations. I love that quote. That is a great quote. Fun, 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 fun. Charles is a quote machine, to say the least. And uh, so we're going to do a theme hour here in a few weeks, Dr. John Deloney and I, and it will be on mental health, on boundaries, on relationships, on wellness, on anything that falls in that category where you can uh, ask him Dr. John Deloney questions specifically during that hour. And if you want to participate in that, uh, what do we send them to, Go to RamseySolutions.com slash ask and just put mental health in the subject line. There it is. Okay. Anything that's going on, marriage, anything. We just take those calls on my show, and we'd love to do some of that here. Yeah, be fun. If you ever listen to the Dr. John Deloney show, these are going to be calls similar to that or um, a little less serious. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's RamseySolutions.com slash ask if you want to participate in that. If you have a question for Dr. D and me, uh, I'll be happy to put that into that mental health theme. That sounds like a children's book, Dave, Dr. It. D yeah. and me. We, um, I'll co-write it with you. Uh, it's, I, I'm thinking somewhere there's some children already traumatized by just the idea. <laughs> we would not sell a lot of copies. Yeah, so, but uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, <laughs> RamseySolutions.com slash ask. Our question of the day comes from Blinds.com. They have a 100% satisfaction guarantee that means even if you mismeasure or you pick the wrong color, they'll remake your window blinds for free. Free samples, free shipping with the new promos they run all the time. You're going to save even more. Always use Ramsey as your promo code. It's magic. It'll save you money. All right, today's question comes from Devante in Chicago. Devante asks, I'm a recent college grad with 50 grand in mostly student loan debt. I'm 25 and work two jobs, one as a delivery driver at 16 bucks an hour and another with a local news program at $14 an hour. I'm looking to grow professionally as a videographer. My skills are in media, TV, productions, and marketing. I've heard many success stories where people have grown their video videography businesses and are making over six figures a year. What's your best advice on how to clear debt and grow my savings so I can support myself as an entrepreneur. This is like an underhand pitch to you, Dave. What would you tell this guy? <laughs> well, um, I mean, we're going to work you on the personal side through the baby steps. That's right. Where you work your way through the debt, using the debt snowball, and those kinds of things. I don't think we're going to be able to stop you as an entrepreneur. Hmm. I think he's already rocking. He's hustling, grinding. He's got his eye on the prize. He knows where he's going. Um what I what I would tell you is this, um, as a young entrepreneur, what I didn't realize was I didn't know what I didn't know. And the best way to solve that is in business what we call is best practices. And that means find someone maybe in another city um, that is who you want to be. They're doing videography. They're making $200,000 a year. And they're in the, you know, the types of things they're videoing are the kind of things you want to video. Mm -hmm. They're doing the types of business you want to be in and uh, make it the kind of money you want to make. And I call them and just go, hey, I'm a young guy and I'm just getting started. I want to be you when I grow up. Could I come over and spend the day with you and just shadow you and ask you questions while I'm looking over your shoulder all day long? And, and then ask them, okay, what's the dumbest thing you ever did? What's the smartest thing? What, what do you wish you'd done? Well, if you were me, what would you do? Um, and where, how do you make this money? And how do you do your billing? And where do you get your customers? And um, how do you do your uh, pricing structure? And uh, uh, I don't think actually taking the videos, actually using the camera is going to be your issue. It's the running of the business that's going to be your issue. So you jump in and get uh, best practices from somebody like that or two or three like that. Um, and that's going to be better than taking a college course on running a business yeah. uh, because those guys are, and gals are out there actually doing it. It's not theory, and you're going to mimic what they do. And I do that to this day. I do too. If, yeah. I, find, if I find someone that's in a, in a space that we're in uh, that's doing better than we're doing, um, I always want to go spend a little time with them or send one of my guys, yeah. gals around here to spend some time with them and go, okay, how are you doing that? What are you doing with this? And mm. how are we doing this? And, um, you know, some of the other people in talk radio and I have shared ideas back and forth. Shapiro, that gang, Ben Shapiro, uh, Glenn Beck, those organizations and our organization interact all the time mm. and help each other. And, uh, okay, how do you do this? When you're doing a live event, what are you doing? Mm. Um, when you're getting your podcast promoted, how are you doing it? And, you know, we're just asking questions all the time uh, from people that are 
you know, even if it's a nuanced corner of the business and they're doing better than we're doing, maybe we're doing better overall, maybe, but this little area over here, they're, they're just going zoom, zoom. Yeah. And I want to know how they're doing that and copy it, emulate it. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, that, that's, that's the best way for you to get going. I remember I, uh, uh, I was in grad school and a, an actual therapist came in to have met with us just to answer questions. And I, I just cut through the chase. A lot of the questions were kumbaya questions. And I just said, Hey, in this small town, how do you make six figures being a counselor? And he said to this room, he said, you're not going to like my answer. I said, all right, go for it. And he said, work really hard and be really, really good at what you do. And I remember thinking, well, that's a deflating answer. And also that's the best answer I could have ever heard because I'll outwork you and I'll do what it takes to get really good at it. Right. Yeah. Work really hard and be real good at what you do, man. Money takes care of itself. Yeah. They, you know, when we're training financial coaches and, and, the old days, the first time we did a room full of people were training him and, and a guy raised his hand. He goes, OK, you're coaching broke people. How do you get paid? And our answer is always up front. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> because you're not going to get paid if you don't get paid up front. Uh, you're either going to donate your services or you're going to get paid up front because you can't, you know, you, broke people aren't there. They're, they're there because they can't pay bills. All right. And they're there, and so you've got to you've got to walk with them, and it's it's kind of a joke line, but it's a best practice. Yeah, you know, it's the real thing. It's a, an actual business issue, um, and how do you get them to keep an appointment once they set an appointment? You know, and a very it's a skin in the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very interesting hmm. process. Lisa's in Washington D.C. Hi, Lisa. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi. Thank you so much for taking my call. Can you hear me? Okay. Absolutely. What's up? Fantastic. Um, first, I want to start by saying that I know that all of what I'm experiencing is ordained. I get that. But I feel completely lost. Um, I am the primary manager of my mother's financial matters. She's 91 years old and lives in her home, which is paid in full. She owns a commercial property that is also paid in full. The house is willed to me. The commercial property is willed to my sister. Together and separately, we've reached out to investors about selling the building, um, but it's too small, so they're not interested. So because of where it's situated, they can't build up or around it. So now we're looking at her house. Her expenses, the, you know, the care expenses have exceeded her income, which is about 5,000 a month. So she's not suffering too badly. So we do have a care, you know, care that comes in Monday Friday, but now we need more help for her. We're thinking have about you talked to a commercial building? real estate agent about selling the, the commercial building or just we talked to investors? We, we spoke with both. And both. no commercial real and estate agent thinks they can sell that building? They could sell it, but for what we would get after the capital gains taxes hit, it wouldn't even be worth it. And what would it sell for? What could you sell it for? 400. Why is that not worth it? Well, after the capital gains taxes. Capital gains taxes aren't but 15%. Did I mention that these facilities are 12 to 14,000 a month? I mean, this is the Washington, D.C. area, and it's ridiculous. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You you have it rented for 14,000 a month? Oh no no no! The the to the cost to put her in a assist, assisted living facility is about four twelve to fourteen thousand a month. So that's what we would be paying. But this is a current source of income for her. So right now we're using that to pay the you know the woman. What's that it? Comes what's to it creating an income? Three thousand. Yeah, I'm, I'm selling it. I'm paying the capital gains tax. She's ninety two. And uh, by the way, twelve to fourteen thousand a month is uh, keep her at home and keep paying for in-home care. It's cheaper and it's a better quality of life. You can do it a lot cheaper than fifteen thousand dollars a month, um, and you can hire twenty-four hour staff cheaper than that. And I would. I'd sell the commercial building. That puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's Did to you walk know you daily can to the with the Prince Show of Peace, Christ speaker. Jesus. Just tell Alexa, Google Assistant, or Siri to play the Ramsey Show podcast. Check out all Ramsey Network shows on your smart speaker today.